the ocean, the largest ecosystem on Earth, and one of the most important for life on our planet. But this ecosystem is changing. We humans are changing it and challenging its inhabitants. We emit more and more carbon dioxide into the air, but it does not stay there. The greenhouse gas finds its way into the oceans with serious consequences for the chemistry of the seawater, the habitat of animals and plants, and finally, also for us humans. Hans Otto Pörtner has been studying these consequences for decades. He knows how the ocean is doing. Die Erwärmung ist momentan der Haupttreiber. Ocean warming is momentarily the main driver in changing the ecosystem. We already observed that higher organisms, such as animals and microalgae, change their geographic distribution to follow their preferred temperature. Many of these species escape to the colder polar regions. But here, another effect of climate change is already awaiting them. The carbon dioxide from the air acidifies these seas particularly fast. Scientists have observed this phenomenon globally for quite some time, especially, however, in the Arctic. Here, several unfavorable conditions coincide. On one hand, carbon dioxide dissolves better in cold seawater. On the other hand, melting ice dilutes the upper water layers, which increases the trend towards acidification. Scientists from the Alfred Wegener Institute set out for the far north. With their research vessel, Heinke, they venture into the fjords of Svalbard. This is where chief scientist Felix Mark wants to examine the fate of fish in acidifying waters. Marine animals are very closely connected to the water they live in. When the acidity of water increases, the acidity of their blood and other body fluids will therefore increase too. Felix Mark is eager to find out how this affects marine animals, so he has set out to catch fish. 80 degrees north, the first haul. Scientists hope for a big catch. If everything turns out as planned, the tank will be teeming with small Atlantic and polar cod. Atlantic cod. A sight scientists will have to get used to. As the water temperature continues to rise, more and more Atlantic cod swim into the waters of Svalbard and spread into a region another species has dominated for a long time, the polar cod. We want to find out if the Atlantic cod has already begun to replace the polar cod around Svalbard, and also if ocean acidification could play an important factor in the competition between the two fish species. Felix Mark is one of the first scientists to investigate how warmer and more acidic waters affect fish. And even beyond the confines of the Institute, his research is of great interest to many. The experiments we conduct here are part of a German research project on ocean acidification called bioacid. The results enable us to get a better understanding of how fish and other marine organisms react to ocean acidification and warming. This way, we can predict how ecosystems will change and how the fisheries will need to adapt. But fish are not the only ones to react sensitively. Especially animals and plants that build lime shells suffer when their habitat becomes more acidic. Das CO2 äh, säuert das Meerwasser an äh, und löst The carbon dioxide acidifies the seawater and at the same time dissolves the calcium carbonate in the lime shells. This is a natural process that obviously depends on the degree of acidification. The shells of mussels or corals are not dissolving yet but the water acidifies at an increasing pace. Little time remains for the organisms to adjust. 
And it would not be the first time that some might not survive. Ozeanversauerungsereignisse hat es in der Erdgeschichte. In past ages, the ocean has acidified on several occasions, always due to changes in different climate parameters, such as temperature. This is why we cannot attribute past mass extinctions solely to ocean acidification. But our research shows a clear CO2 signal. Aber man sieht bei diesen Untersuchungen doch ein deutliches CO2-Signal. The answer lies on the seafloor. Here the history of our planet is stored in deep layers of mud. Creatures from long ago have sunken to the depths of the ocean. Their fossils reveal traces of past events, of climate change and mass extinction. To uncover and to understand these traces, scientists penetrate deep into the seafloor. They lift Earth's history on board, meter for meter. Jelle Beimer belongs to those who study the archive on the seafloor. The biogeochemist is looking for a very special witness of past ages, the single-celled foraminifera. We assume that the, um, the paleo representatives of, for instance, foraminifera have behaved very similar as uh, the living uh, counterparts today. If you assume that they respond in a similar way to change in climate, change in uh, environment, um, then we can use those changes and draw conclusions with respect to change in the past. The sediment cores at the Alfred Wegener Institute give Jelle Weimar first clues. 250,000 years of Earth's history stretch in front of him. With the help of the different colors, he can detect different ages at first glance. The lighter parts uh, show you that there are that the ocean had at that time circumstances that were favorable for organisms like uh, foraminifera or diatoms, and therefore the biogenic content of the core is is larger. That makes it uh, look brighter. On the contrary, if you see the uh, the dark parts, we know that the conditions in that time were not favorable for these organisms. To examine these single-celled organisms more closely, the scientists need to sample the core. For the human eye, the fossilized shells look rather unimpressive. Underneath the microscope, however, they unfold first hints of how the living conditions in the ocean were during their lifetime. There is a saying that the, the past is the key to the future which means that, that by looking at the past in the archives of the ocean, we can learn about our future. Um, one of the most important things for society right now, and I think um, that's also one of, my, uh, one of my drivers, is to understand what this carbon perturbation, so the change in the carbon cycle that we are, that we are currently uh, doing, um, what does that mean for the future? Is the ocean going to acidify more? What's going to happen with, uh, with climate and so on? With the help of this data and the test results from the lab, the scientists predict how the ocean and consequently its living creatures will change, with effects that we will feel for a long time to come. Wir werden zu unseren Lebzeiten das Klima I think we have to become aware that we live in a world that we have already altered and are continuing to alter. This also includes climate change. Within our lifetime, we will not be able to lead the climate back to its pre-industrial state. We have induced changes on our physical environment, which we eventually will have to adapt to. But we can try to minimize future changes by reducing our CO2 emissions möglichst nicht weiter ansteigen zu lassen.